Okay, so we talked about pathophysiology with sickle cell anemia, right? We talked about some common signs and symptoms that we'll see when there's a complication that occurs. So all that's left to do is a quick overview on treatment. So how do we treat sickle cell anemia? Well, I, I always say first things first, let's remember what causes the disease. Because in order to know how to treat something, we need to know what the cause is. Now, if this image over here is my DNA, that should be your reminder that sickle cell anemia is genetic. As a result, there is no cure, right? We cannot change genes. So we can change our own genes that we wear, but we can't change DNA genes. So there's no cure for sickle cell anemia. Now that's important for us to keep in mind as we talk about how we're gonna treat some of this. Now, when we're talking about treating sickle cell anemia, we're really talking about treating the symptoms. So treating what happens as a result of these complications. Now we, we had a whole video that talked about some of the common complications and common signs and symptoms. So let's revisit that. Let's, let's make a list of what we know is going to occur as a result of sickle cell anemia. First thing that should come to mind is pain. When someone is in a sickle cell crisis, right? Sickle cell crisis, they're going to experience pain. That pain we know is as a direct result of lack of oxygen being delivered to the tissues. Speak of lack of oxygen, that's another huge issue. Low oxygen, we have the low oxygen because we have our sickled cells, right? or our hemoglobin S, which is our mutation, it does not carry oxygen, no O2. Hydration, hydration is an issue in individuals with sickle cell anemia. We know that low hydration is going to equate low blood flow, okay? So that's, that's a problem as well. We also know that we're going to have to deal with the rapid destruction of RBCs. Now that rapid destruction, we gotta think about our spleen, right? So let's, let's just talk about our spleen for a second again. So here's an image of my spleen. I'm making it nice and fleshy and spongy because it, it truly is. It's like a spongy piece of uh, organ that, that's in our body. So here's our spleen. What do we know about our spleen? We know that all red blood cells are filtered through our spleen, okay? That's where it goes. In this scenario, and let's make an arrow so we know that these red blood cells are gonna go to our spleen to get filtered. In this scenario, we're talking about sickle cell anemia, so we gotta throw some of those cells into the mix as well. Well, because these cells are malformed and mutated, it causes a rapid destruction of those cells as well as some of the surrounding red blood cells. So we're looking at these becoming destroyed. As a result, the body is going to try to compensate. So our bone marrow, and let's write over here, bone marrow is going to increase the production of RBCs. So here's my RBC. So now my bone marrow is shooting out a lot of RBCs trying to compensate for the fact that the spleen has been destroying them. Well, the issue is that if we were had to deal with a race, right? If we're dealing with bone marrow uh, versus the spleen and who's functioning faster, so spleen versus bone marrow, the spleen is going to win. That means we are destroying more red blood cells than we are actively replacing them. And that's an issue. So, so what does that mean? That means that we may need to kind of artificially, if you will, replace the red blood cells. So, so how do we do that? What are we really looking at? So let's look at them individually. For pain, what can we do about the pain? Well, common things that we can do is we can give drugs, right? So common drugs that we'll give for pain and sickle cell anemia would be NSAIDs and narcotics. Okay, our NSAIDs are our non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, right? And this is gonna help with inflammation. More importantly, it's gonna help with pain. Now, NSAIDs can be given daily, 
and this would be like a prophylactic idea. And it can also be given um, only when the person experiences pain. Now our narcotics is for our increased pain episodes. You wanna give narcotic pain medications because if someone's experiencing a sickle cell crisis, they're gonna be in a great deal of pain. Now this oxygen issue that we talked about, let's talk about that. Well, what, what can we do for our oxygen? If you know we were lacking oxygen, well then let's give it. So these are my oxygen molecules. We can deliver oxygen via an oxygen delivery device, maybe an oxygen mask, or a nasal cannula, so deliver O2 to the patient. If we know that hydration is an issue, right? Well, what do you think we're gonna do for that? You got it. We are going to increase, increase fluids, okay? So we can encourage fluids to be given orally, so the person to drink more, or we can give them IV, intravenously, and we can do that um, if there's an emergent state, for instance, somebody comes in with a sickle cell crisis. Now to address our RBCs in our spleen, we need to talk about replacing that red blood cells that we're missing. So we may need to do, let's make my red blood cells here, we may need to deliver red blood cells via IV. So we can give, uh, let's see, red blood cell via IV. So we can give red blood cell infusion, okay, to help replace that. And now, since we talked about our spleen, I kind of left this for last because it's an important concept. Coming back to this, it's one more thing, one more bonus thing that we have to think and keep in mind about. Our spleen contains about half of our immune cells. So that means that if we destroy our spleen because we have an occlusion that occurs in our spleen with these sickled cells, we are going to destroy our immune system. As a result, taking antibiotics, prophylactically antibiotics daily as a prophylactic measure is very important because just like we can experience an infarct in any of our microvascular systems, we can experience an infarct in our spleen. If that happens, we'll damage our spleen and we will lose it. The spleen, again, plays a huge role in our immune system. So antibiotics daily is certainly recommended for somebody that has sickle cell anemia. So if we revisit the treatments, we know again, it is a genetic disorder, so there's no cure for that, okay? What we're really doing is treating the symptoms, treating what's gonna happen to the patient, how can we make them more comfortable, and how can we kind of lessen the, the severity of what's happening. So with pain, of course, our NSAIDs, that can be over the counter, taken daily. Narcotics, taken when that person is experiencing moderate to severe pain. We know that we are dealing with low oxygen in the blood, just like many of our anemic states. So ideally, we should deliver the oxygen, right? Oxygen delivering devices, nasal cannulas. Think about your uh, O2 masks, oxygen masks. For hydration, we always want to include, um, encourage rather, fluids. So we're going to tell that patient if they can drink more fluids or we can deliver it IV. And of course, our RBC is we're rapidly losing that. So it's time for a blood transfusion. Give a blood transfusion. And then the big thing I don't ever want you to forget about is our spleen. Our spleen filters all the red blood cells in our body, including these sickled cells. Over time, if there's an infarct, like we discussed, it can damage our spleen and we can lose it. A lost spleen hurts our immune system. So to prevent any infection from happening because our immune system's been impaired, antibiotics daily is gonna be our friend. Okay, hope you found this helpful. Talk to you soon.